Okay, I'm shutting the window so you won't hear cars go by and uh, doors slam and things like that. Uh, I've been looking at uh, how you've been working on your papers and I want to try to provide you as much help as possible. So I'm going to try a different approach and hopefully this will help uh, some of you. And what you're having problem with is identifying a research topic and not a content-based uh, term paper topic. Uh, this is a research class. You're writing a research paper. It's going to be about research. Uh, every other class that you've been in, you've written content-based expository papers. Expository means we expose a subject and you tell us what we know about a subject. Uh, and I think a lot of students uh, aren't clear about the difference between a paper on research methods and a content-based term paper. So I'm going to try to clarify that for you. So to state the obvious, Psych 330 is a research class. Uh, research is a process uh, that we go to. Yes, there's some content, there's some facts in it. What's a Latin squares design? what is uh, between subjects uh, designs, uh, but mainly it's a process. It's a process of conducting and designing research. All your other classes have been content-based classes. Abnormal psychology, social psychology, history of psych, IO psych. They're all classes about content, about facts, or if you allow me, they're all what classes versus how classes. What is a what class? Uh, these are the content classes. And these classes are all about what, answering the question what, such as what happens when you have more bystanders during an emergency? You'll have less helping. It'll be less likely people will help. Uh, or what happens when someone is labeled as mentally ill? They're going to be socially rejected. So these questions that start out, what happens if, or what happens when you have this, uh, these are the what questions. And in abnormal psych, social psych, uh, they're all these what classes where you're interested in content, in facts. Our class is a how class. It's a process class. And process classes are about the how. So in our class, you know, we start with a fact. What happens when you have more bystanders during an emergency? They're going to be less likely to help. But then our class steps in and says, but how do we know this? How do we know that the more bystanders you have during an emergency, they're going to be less likely to help? Uh, another example, what happens when someone is labeled as mentally ill? They're going to be socially rejected. But how do we know this? Uh, how do we know that when you're labeled mentally ill, you're going to be rejected socially? And that question really allows you to, to zero in on your research topic. A, a good but informal way of describing a research topic would be, what happens when someone is labeled as mentally ill? They're socially rejected. But how do we know that? And answering that question would be how you would go about uh, you know, doing your research paper. So then how do we find a topic? And uh, you know. At this point, what I want to do is do a little div uh, diversion and graphically present the differences between what versus how. So let's say that we divide everything up between theory and reality, or conceptual world and real world. In the theory conceptual world, we have concepts like airplane, fire, clouds. In reality or the uh, real world, we have real things, concrete things, fire, airplanes, clouds. Uh, also, we can divide up what we've been talking about in this class between uh, the concept world and reality. Uh, in the concept world, we have independent variables and dependent variables. Uh, IVs and DVs are concepts. They're not real things. So they exist in this concept theory world. Uh, by the way, cause also exists in this concept theory world, uh, so it's up there also. Uh, so let's start to fill out an example, uh, labeling and rejection. That was the uh, example paper you read. 
So uh, in the concept world is labeling, this idea that if you're labeled as mentally ill, then you'll be socially rejected. Those are ideas. You may think, well, no, they're, they're real things, but let's slow down a little bit. What we've been talking about in this class is making the jump from theory or concept land to reality land uh, in that we have an independent variable and we have a dependent variable. We have to somehow make them real. We have these ideas and we want to somehow tie these ideas down into real life things. So in doing that, we create operational definition. There we go. That's the right slide. And so uh, the label or the independent variable might be a concept or a theory, but the operational definition will be a real thing or a real set of uh, situations or a real behavior in the real world. Uh, so rejection or a dependent variable may be an idea or concept, but it will be, uh, you know, its operational definition will be in the real world as somehow creating an actual measurement of something. But of course there could be other operational definitions of our IVs and DVs and we've seen examples of that. Uh, for example another operational definition of label is that you the participant overhears uh, a confederate talking about being in psychotherapy for six months. And so now we're operationalizing label, being labeled as mentally ill, as not, uh, number one, being in a mental hospital, but being in psychotherapy. And number two, uh, you're not reading about it uh, in a question, in a, a dossier that the researcher gave you, but you're accidentally, quote unquote, hearing it. And those are two important changes. Uh, and then we can talk about other operational definitions of rejection, uh, such as uh, after you learn about your partner, you're set, told to go wait in the waiting room uh, with your partner, and your partner sitting in the uh, chair that's uh, up against the wall on the left, and there's seven seats empty. Where do you sit? Do you sit right next to your partner, or do you sit uh, four seats away or six seats away? That would be another way of measuring rejection. And the important difference between those two uh, is that first off one is on a piece of paper and one is an actual behavior. Uh, and the other difference is uh, whereas if you're a subject in the experiment and you're filling out a questionnaire, you certainly know that the researcher has set up this whole thing, this questionnaire. Uh, it just didn't you know, happen. But you're really not aware if you go into the waiting room that this is really the experiment. Uh, you think that this is the experiment really hasn't begun yet. So you see there's two different, very important differences between just these two operational definitions. Now let's get back to what and how. Uh, when we talk about uh, the things in the concept world, uh, labeling causes rejection. You know, what happens when somebody's labeled? Uh, they're socially rejected. Uh, those what questions are all existing more or less in the conceptual world. Uh, what happens when there's more uh, bystanders to an accident? Uh, there's going to be less, uh, they're going to be less likely to help. All those what questions really exist at the conceptual world. Uh, in the reality world, that's where you see the how questions. Uh, how do we know that labeling causes rejection? Well, we know it because we operationally defined label and we operationally define rejection, and we had an experiment, we got subjects, and we did the experiment. And that's how we know. Okay, and that's a how question. So getting more specific now, getting back to uh, what you should be doing, uh, the green cloud there, or maybe that's a green squashed out brain, I don't know, maybe that's more... Uh, you know, imaginative, you'll remember it more. You need to find and stick with one what question to really build your literature review around. And, uh, you know, that may not be what the, you know, 
big literature reviews that you're reading in the published journals are doing, but for your case to learn how to do it, that's what you need to do. And on the other hand, actually those big literature reviews, that's what they're kind of doing. Each one of those sections in a big literature review is about one what question. And so what you need to do is find a, you know, a lot of articles, a handful of articles, at least five or six or seven articles, experiments on the same what question. So let me reiterate, go back to uh, the example paper on stigma. Uh, that paper was focused around one what question, the IV of labeling, the DV of rejection. And while it was focused on that what question, it, the meat of the paper was all about how questions. How do we know that labeling causes rejection? Now you think that may be a simple uh, question with a simple answer. How do we know labeling causes rejection? Because the experiments tell us. Well, that's not as trustworthy as it seems. Because it could be that an artifact is causing rejection and not labeling. What's an artifact? An artifact is an element of the research method that causes changes in the dependent variable. That is, when we see changes in the dependent variable between conditions, we want to conclude that the IV is causing it, but there could be something else causing it, an artifact. And so, for example, an example of an artifact, uh, the operational definition of labeling causes rejection, not being labeled itself. That is, the way you chose to operationally define labeling, uh, that method itself, that operational definition itself, is causing the person to be rejected, not the fact that they were in a mental hospital, not the fact that they're in psychotherapy, but the way that you set it up as a researcher. So uh, finally, to answer the question, how do we know labeling uh, you know, causes rejection? We know that because we look at different operational definitions across different studies, and different operational definitions produce the same results. That is, if we use a dossier method as an operational definition of labeling, or if we use a overhear or overhearing uh, operational definition of labeling, they both produce the same result, which is social rejection. And the more different operational definitions we get, the more stronger we can make a conclusion that it's not an artifact, it's the independent variable. Uh, more examples. Uh, so how do we know an operational definition artifact is not causing rejection? because we know because different operational definitions produce the same results. And how do we know that a methodological artifact is not causing rejection? Uh, because we've used different research methods and they produce the same results. That is, if you do a lab study on stigma and rejection, if you do a naturalistic observation, if you do a survey, a pencil and paper survey, you all find the same thing. So it doesn't matter which research method we use, we still get the same thing. So that makes us feel that, you know, it's not that there's a artifact due to using a laboratory study, because we find the same thing in naturalistic observations and surveys. Or how do we know that a sampling artifact is not causing rejection? That is, different samples. Uh, is the sample that we're using, is that sample causing uh, the person in our methodology to be rejected. And if we look at different uh, experiments and they use different samples from different populations, then no, uh, it's not a sampling artifact. Uh, so reject, uh, you know, being labeled must be what's causing rejection. So for your paper, what you should be doing, you should be trying to find one what one set of an IV and a DV pair. Uh, and then you need to look at this and find five, six, seven articles on that one pair. And then you start to organize, well, what do we know about this pair? And that's your conclusion about research findings. 
And then how do we know that those research findings are not artifacts? And you talk about the different methods used, the different oper operationalizations, the different samples, and you talk about what they found. Uh, and there you have the, sec the conclusion on methods. And so, as I said before, uh, you need to find several studies on the same IV-DV pair or really close to the same IV-DV pair. And then you can actually compare different methodologies looking at that one phenomena, that one IV-DV pair. I hope this helps, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing your work uh, in the future. Bye-bye.